Welcome to the Healthy Living Podcast, hosted by coaches Bill and Essen. With so many fitness fads and trends compounded with hundreds of mixed reviews, it is nice to know that this madness can be simplified into meaningful content, whether you want to believe it or not. There are millions of Americans that are literally eating themselves to death, a learned behavior that has been passed down from generation to generation. Let's connect with the team that has the knowledge and experience to change this. Welcome, everyone. This is Coach Bill with Coach Aston, and today's segment is regarding general nutrition. And general nutrition is also uh, with food. What is food? And it's defined as any substance consisting of essentially proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and other nutrients used in the body to sustain growth in vital processes. It also it, to enable uh, to have energy produced from the food you eat, where 85% of that, it, it comes from fat and carbohydrates, which I was not aware of that, that high mm-hmm. range. I knew that it came from fat and carbohydrates, first and foremost. Um, but I know that only 15% of the energy comes from protein. So um, it's interesting. I just thought that was fascinating. And um, mm-hmm. and with that being said, I have, I, the, uh, the floor is yours, Eston. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just I'll springboard off of like what food is like you mentioned. Food is essential. Right. It does provide vital nutrients for our survival, but it also helps our bodies function and therefore stay healthy. Um, food, um, as a component, consists of what are called macronutrients, and that's those proteins and carbohydrates and fats that you mentioned uh, that not only offer calories to uh, which fuel the body, but also give uh, the body its energy. Uh, to play specific roles in maintaining its health. But uh, food also contains what are called micronutrients. And we can divide those into four groups. Uh, The first one is what are called water-soluble vitamins. The second is fat-soluble vitamins. Um, A third are what are called macro-minerals. And then the last one, the fourth, is what are called trace minerals. Collectively, uh, this gives us what we call good nutrition. And again, that plays an important role in leading a healthy lifestyle. When you combine that with physical activity, um, the food you eat or the diet that you're on will help you reach and maintain healthy weight, will reduce your risk of chronic diseases such as heart disease and cancers, and promote uh, a person's overall health. So, so that's kind of the overview of it. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's a lot of important information, and I'll dumb it down a little bit. <laughs> um, when I first learned about exercise and eating well, my emphasis was on working out and eat, just being smart with what, what I ate. For example, didn't drink any pop, didn't eat any chocolate, no candy, no hard candy. Um, I cut down on my sweets, obviously, and but I didn't know about pasta. I didn't know about carbs too much. I knew about carbs that you had cut down on that just because um, it makes you fat. That's not necessarily not, not, That's right. It's not necessarily true. Right. So, but, I, but my emphasis was on exercise, 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 you know, hit Tabata, uh, strength training, the whole nine yards. And uh, I said this once, I'll keep on saying it, that that angle is wrong. Yes. Is you can't sustain that regime over a period of time. What you can sustain is eating good, eating smart. I'll say I'll actually add to good nutrition, eating good, eating good, eating well, and I'll replace those words with eating smart and also eating more nutritious and right. not eating as less nutritious. Right, exactly. So this is what pretty much what this topic is about: eating smart, eating more nutritious, and um, I just want to throw that out there before you, we get too far into this because no it's uh, fine because we need to talk about what is nutrition and nutrition is how food affects the health of our body mm-hmm. like we both we've all we just said food is essential right. by, by providing vital nutrients for survival and therefore it helps the body function and therefore stay healthy <laughs> but, yeah, protein carbohydrate and fat it's um these are three areas that pretty much are the staple of what's in food pretty much mm-hmm. Yes. Well, they, these are these macronutrients. And again, these are nutrients that the body needs in large amounts. These are primarily that give us the energy that our body needs in the form of calories. Mm. 
uh, proteins uh, to break it down eventually get digested in what we call and absorbed into what we call amino acids. These become our building blocks, uh, which we need for growth, development, repair, maintenance of our body tissues. Mm. Uh, they also provide structure for our muscles, our bones. As I mentioned, they repair tissues when damaged. They also help immune cells fight inflammation and infection. Do not know that. Uh, yeah, so that's where we, we need them. Um, and they can be found in beef, pork, uh, chicken, game and wild meats, fish, seafood, but also eggs, soybeans, and what we call legumes, like beans. Mm -hmm. um, the key thing is that, unfortunately, a lot of us get those uh, protein sources from processed and high-fat meats, which basically are not as nutritious as a, a pure source, if you use the word. Um, I know there's been conflicting reports uh, about taking in uh, processed meats, but basically the balance of evidence does confirm that these types of meats, processed meats like bacon, ham, pepperoni, hot dogs, you know, basic lunch meats, mm -hmm. they are less healthy, and I'll say that in quotes, than if you took proteins in from fish, skinless chicken, nuts, beans, soy, whole grains, and that's all because of the way that the food is processed. All food that you get from a grocery store has been processed. It's the mm -hmm. way in which it's processed. Some have more nitrates in them, some have less nitrates and, and nitrate. preservatives. And um, when you think of a processed food, the manufacturer is thinking of a shelf life. So the longer the shelf life, the more additives it has, the less nutritious it is. When you have something that's more in its pure form, then it has less of that processing, therefore less of a shelf life, but then higher nutritional value. Mm. So that's the difference in um, getting something that's more, more nutritious versus less nutritious over a period of time. I'm not saying don't have a pepperoni, you know, pizza, but not live off of it. Don't have, I'm not saying don't have bacon with breakfast, but don't have bacon with every meal. <laughs> and here's somebody, I, I am somebody who loves bacon. Too. It's all about portion control. Yeah. So again, too much of these or too excess of just proteins in general, the body will then, if it can't store it in muscles and bones and et cetera, it will then convert it into a fat and then you store it as adipose tissue. Mm -hmm. And we're less active. So again, that's what our bodies are misunderstanding. Yep. Um, so proteins can be converted into fats, just like carbohydrates can. Mm -hmm. and, and we mentioned that carbohydrates are important. That's true. Uh, their main role is to provide energy and fuel in the form of sugars. Uh, same way, again, like I mentioned, like gasoline is fuel for a car. So if you think about um, this, that fuels carbohydrates or gasoline, uh, they eventually get converted into sugars. And then those sugars start our metabolic processes. They aid in uh, like sprinting and power movements. Um, and sugars are needed before fats will begin to break down the energy. There's a saying that uh, fat burns in a hydrogen uh, in a carbohydrate flame. So you have to kind of burn the sugars first to get the processes going. And then when sugars begin to diminish, then the fat metabolism kicks in to take over for the endurance activity that you're requesting of the body. And carbohydrates are coming in the form of corns, beans, plantains, rice, tortilla, pota potatoes, uh, root vegetables like uh, yucca, uh, but also fruits will deliver sugars. Uh, you can also, uh, carbohydrates come in the form of starches, like in a potato. And uh, when the digestive process is over, again, that end product is a sugar, what we call glucose, which is primarily stored in your liver as a, what we call glycogen. Uh, but um, smaller portions are, of course, stored throughout the whole body, body cells. But as I mentioned before, too much or excess of uh, sugars or glucose can be converted into adipose tissue as well for storage. So some things you should avoid in your diet are added sugar, baked sweets, and what are called white carbohydrates like pastas, potatoes, rice, uh, cakes, pancakes. Um, there are whole grain versions, which are better options because right. of the digestive process and the end process. So yes, you have whole wheat pastas, breads. They even have whole grain pancakes. Um, that doesn't manage it correctly. Let me interject real quick, Aston, and that is, <clears throat> that's why aerobic, not anaerobic, aerobic meaning you have an elevated heart rate. You are huffing and puffing, but you, you can still catch your breath over a, at least 20 minutes, sustained 20 minutes. That's yeah. when you're what? 
Well, that's when you're starting to go from that sugar, sugar is a fuel source into fat being a fuel source and proteins are intermediaries. Right. You do lose small amounts of uh, proteins in the body when you do aerobic activity, mm -hmm. but it's disproportional. Correct. And if you're doing high energy sprinting work, short, quick bursts, or you maintain high levels of activity, but without a warm up, So you don't even get fat a chance to actually begin to break down to create, uh, to release the energy stores that it has in the form of fatty acids. So let me ask you this, micronutrients, what we just touched on, and those are um, for the body. And they break down into smaller and smaller components of the body. Oh, all right. Them. So yeah. what's the difference between, no, so what's vitamins and minerals? What's that all? Okay, those are called micronutrients. They, they're all, and those are, those fall into that, right? Well, macro is, is the proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And okay. then the micronutrients are the vitamins and minerals. Gotcha. Um, these are found in foods. So they're food components. And these help uh, support overall health by playing important roles in cellular metabolism and even neurological functions. Um, some essential minerals like calcium, iron, potassium may sound familiar. Hmm. Of course, consuming a balanced diet, which includes fruits, vegetables, and da a little bit of dairy, uh, protein foods, whole or enriched grains will ensure the body has plenty of nutrients to use. Um, so let's see, uh, to give you some examples like vitamin A, uh, which helps with the eyes to see, calcium and magnesium for muscles and blood vessels to relax. Uh, they also prevent cramps and high blood pressure. Everyone's heard about vitamin C, that helps with wounds to heal, uh, actually helps our immune system. Uh, I think iron, We've all heard about iron. It helps uh, blood transport oxygen through hemoglobin, helps prevent anemia. Uh, there's uh, water-soluble vitamins B12 and B6. Um, and they help with the nervous system? They can, but uh, B6 is more for nervous system. Yeah. Uh, they help with providing uh, or making serotonin and norepinephrine. Those are two neurotransmitters. Okay. They also help form the myelin sheathing around the nerve. Hmm. Uh, B12 helps prevent um, a type of anemia called megaloplastic anemia, uh, which makes people tired and weak. Ah. Then you have vitamin D, which we kind of mentioned, also helps with the nervous system a little bit, and also helps with um, bone formation, immunity. Vitamin E uh, is a powerful antioxidant. Okay, vitamin so E is something my doctor said that, you know, I'm in Western Pennsylvania that I need to take supplements even though it's summertime throughout the whole year in yeah. winter time you know so and there are different types of vitamin d i mean there's you know i'm sure people have heard of uh uh, uh like vitamin d3 you know you should take that for your immune system right so, so yep. it, it does have different um roles that it play depending on the type of vitamin d you have but yep Overall, it, it helps maintain health and maintain strong bones. That's the best way to understand it. But it does help with also our immunity. Um, but without vitamin D, calcium can't be binded to the bone matrix to form solid bone. Wow. Okay. In, in put in short. And then I think a, a more a, a one mineral we're all comfortable with knowing is salt. <laughs> Sodium chloride is uh, yeah. what we have on our tabletops. Sea salt versus ionized salt. Is there, any, is there a third type of salt? Well, there's different different types. Of course, there's all different types of salt. Um, but the two most popular that you see now uh, are sea salt and the, the table salt mm. that we have sodium chloride. Uh, for the most part, you know, there's controversy on the, the, the different types of salt you should use. You know, there's a, a, actually there are 12 different types of salts. 12 different types of salt. 12 different types of salts, yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. There's table salt, right? There's kosher salt. There's sea salt. There's even Himalayan pink salt. Right, I've seen that. Celtic sea salt. I mean, I could go on and on. So there's different types. Yeah. <laughs> so, and they all have different properties that they report that they do. You know. What would you recommend, Aston? Well, I mean, I I, I prefer sea salt mm -hmm. just because I like I like the taste of it. It doesn't mean that it's more nutritious at all. Um, I have friends that use the Himalayan pink salt because they believe in the, uh, how it manipulates the ions in the body. Hmm. It does have a bolder flavor than other salts, from what I understand. Um, so we, uh, sometimes uh, I have friends that actually use it as the uh, salt ribbing for their margarita glasses. 
Uh, <laughs> so, so let me ask you this. Um, our body needs salt, right? Yes, it does. Again, without salt, it's electrolyte, mm -hmm. um, like calcium, potassium. Uh, it helps the body conduct electrical activity within the body. But again, too much is not good enough, right? Yeah. Um, but your body needs a certain uh, amount of sodium. Again, too much of it can change uh, pressures in your body, which can affect blood pressure, and which mm -hmm. gives you a risk for heart disease and even strokes. So um, that's, that's kind of like the synopsis of macro and micronutrients in um, diets and where they come from. Go right into the food types that we mentioned. Okay. Function and food examples, Not only because um, I think the point has already been uh, taken about you have to have a balanced diet um, consisting of nutrients. Uh, Both macro and micro. Yeah. yeah, sorry, nutritional food that sustains life. It can be, you, have, you need your fats, you need your carbs, you need your proteins, you need your salts. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to. And the percentage of those do vary based on the age and the activity of the individual. So sure. um, the macronutrients is uh, something that we can summarize in our in our next um, segment here about the food types function and the food examples. So I'll let you run with that. All right. Well, like if you want to, again, to make it a little bit simpler, think of a carbohydrates as go foods, protein foods as grow foods, and um, produce as glowing foods. Interesting. So, go, uh, grow, glow. And glow, right. So good nutrition requires eating at least one serving of all these three types for, in each meal that you're eating. Hmm. So to give you an example, like if we looked at a food type, carbohydrate-rich foods, they give us our fuel, and you'd find them in breads, grains, cereals. Right. Protein-rich, which are our building blocks, we found in fish, pork, and even beans. Even beans, right. Uh, I know I said pork and beans, I know. Uh, fats and oils, which give us energy and cell growth, you'd find them in nuts, uh, peanut butter, cheeses, eggs, olive oil, avocados, coconuts, even coconut oil. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, fruits and vegetables will combine a combination of those three. To glow fat. That, yeah. So that's, um, that's going to be helpers and protectors like apples, potatoes, tomatoes. So just understand fruits and vegetables all contain carbohydrates, proteins, and even some fats. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Uh, they are a mix. Yeah. So you can't so, fruits and vegetables. Yeah, fruits and vegetables, for the most part, are the greatest com combination of carbohydrates, proteins, and mm -hmm. fats in one product. The thing that I found uh, this I, I, I want to um, mention is um, the hardiness of the food you eat. If you're um, if you're satisfied, make you satisfied. Uh, fruits and vegetables don't do that to, for me anyway. Yeah, but but for some people, because they do have carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, that's why someone can be a vegetarian or a vegan, and it works fine for them. Yep, yep. But yes, people can be vegans and vegetarians and live a very healthy life because, again, fruits and vegetables do come with all three of the major macronutrients and even micronutrients that the body needs. And most of the animals we eat are vegetarian. When was the last time you saw a skinny bison? <laughs> or a skinny elephant. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> good point, right? They don't eat <laughs> gorillas, <laughs> right? Yeah, so most vegetarians are big, muscular, stocky animals. How about the dinosaurs too. I mean, yeah, yeah, look at some of yeah, a lot of the herbivores that were dinosaurs, the brontosaurus. And that's a lot of brontosaurus, but that's how I, I learned it as. Yeah. So we're not saying vegetarians or vegans are weak, and you know frail individuals because they're not getting meats that's not the case it's again genetically how you're predisposed to process foods and their nutrients to give you a healthy body right so that's, you have to look back to your ethnicity and where you come from and the region of the world that your ethnicity came from mm -hmm. now in modern times we're all mixed no one's pure or anything anymore one thing i want to interject real quick is the um we have to go back to you, like you said, about your ancestry, um, knowing where you, you, your ancestors came from mm -hmm. and how they ate. Mm -hmm. I'll even be more basic than that. We have to go back to preparing our food um, because it's more nutritious. Why? Because of the, there's less preservatives. It's not processed as much. Right. Uh, 
I'll make it of of someone who the only time I really cooked is when I was down in Virginia for two years out of all my life. Yeah. Well, um, mom and dad took care of everything. You lived at home for a long time. <laughs> but and mom loved to cook. That was how she showed she loved you. Eat, eat. Eat, we did. Manessen, Manessen, remember? Off Deutsch. <laughs> so what I'm trying to get, my point is this, that I never thought I'd see myself make myself a every day prepare a i call it a power salad and it's yeah, pre-mixed with uh lettuce with beans with um as sugar snap peas i may throw uh, tomatoes in there but then i add with it a tuna tuna a can of tuna a lot of cheese and i'll have uh, two eggs with it that's my daily regime of eating and um now it didn't happen overnight but the point is i prepare my food and that's my preparation. How, and even though it comes in, one part of it comes in a can. If there's chicken that is, is cooked, I'll throw that in there. You know, but to the point is the shelf life is short, but the consumption is is also short. I mean, it, it doesn't take long to consume that food, and it's prepared to be consumed in a short period of time. And that's our mentality. Is like if you go hunt, and we were when thousands of years ago we hunt. They had a way of preserving food, but basically they had to eat it up. And or to go or, or went bad. So um, the only point I want to make is it's okay to do little things and start doing little things to prepare your food uh, to be eaten instead of buying it. Um, yeah, and I think salads are a great resource not when you add like proteins to it, but also you provide fiber, which helps uh, get that through the elimination process quicker. Right. So in the end, uh, how food is grown, then processed, and then like you mentioned, ultimately cooked will determine their nutritional value once we eat them. So like you mentioned, for example, uh, canned foods, they're less nutritious than frozen, and frozen is less nutritious than raw. Mm -hmm. uh, boiled foods have less nutritional value than steamed versus eaten raw. Mm -hmm. So it does come all down to portions and utilization of the foods and energy in the form of calories and nutrients within a body. That's the bottom line. Yep. So look at the, how, you know, look at, the foods you're taking in, how they've been processed, but ultimately, how are they being cooked to be consumed? Yep. And I'll, I think we, this is all about nutrition, and you can't have nutrition without exercise. I'm sorry, you can't. Correct. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Right. We'll do that all the time, and they, they may starve themselves. They may, um, I shouldn't say starve themselves, not knowingly, but they do have calorie restrictions. They're, they have deficits in their diet. That's correct. Right. So exercise. That's your. That's your balance. I mean. That's what's the beauty about it. it doesn't have to be, you don't have to kill yourself. And that's the thing that I learned. Slow and steady wins the race. Steady wins the race. Yes. Slow and steady. Use all your fuel sources. Yeah. And it's less calories in, more calories out equals loss. Yeah. And the type of loss will determine the type of activity that's needed, the energy that's needed. Yep. So if you're doing, uh, like we mentioned, more sustainable movements over at least a 20 minute period of time, you'll probably be burning more fats than sugars. If you're doing stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, you're probably using more sugars, less fats. So one thing that I'll add also um, in relation to that is it's your body type. And we had a podcast, previous podcast, eating um, by body type. We also had blood type. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're not sure of what your body type or how and you know, what your body type you have we on that podcast there is a um, there's a link to it's a, like a five question uh i call it a quiz that it will determine your body type <clears throat> and on that you can then pick pick the type of exercises you should be doing and if you have any questions, please contact us and we'll be more than happy to walk you through that so i'll throw that out there okay it's all connected it is it is yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, again, it's all about acclimatization and relationships, or who to call upon as well. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah, I think we we kind of did this. We've we've cooked this meal and it's ready to eat. You think this one is done? I think it's done. Get it? It's done right. It's done very right. It's done well. <laughs> well done, Eston. Well Thank you. done. Indeed. Thank you. Well, this concludes our podcast with Coach Bill and Coach Eston. Until next time, be healthy, be strong, be a life warrior. Be well. The 
opinions and topics expressed in this podcast are those of the participants and do not necessarily support the opinions and views of the wellness community. We would love to hear your thoughts, so click on the message button and give us your constructive feedback. Thank you for listening and make a positive difference today.